All right, all right. So we're going to go ahead and, yes, because it's 7.05, we're going to go ahead and jump into Murray's Law. Thank you so much for joining me live. I appreciate it. And then for everyone who is catching the replay, I appreciate you watching the replay. And if you are watching on YouTube or Instagram, if you want to be a part of the live conversation, make sure you join the Genius Lounge so you can be in the conversation live, right? Cool beans. So tonight's um, topic is really centered around, we have a main subject for tonight, but before we get into that, we do have um, a question that's in the Genius Lounge. So we're gonna answer that first. Um, and then our topic for tonight is really based around a question that I get all the time. So can I file my own trademark? Do I need an attorney to file my trademark? Should I file my own trademark? You know, what should I know if I try to go that route? So that's what tonight's focus is going to be. But we have a really good question that I want to answer. And um, the question is, are you able to recommend or give advice for hiring CPAs to handle state filings for LLCs? And are there resources to make sure we're complying with the cookie regulations on our site, especially if we're collecting personal information like email or subscription newsletter list, list? Great question. And this question was submitted by an insider. So I'm going to start with the second question first, which is making sure that you're complying. One of the things that you want to have for your website is a privacy policy to let people know how you're collecting your, the information, what you're doing with the information. And that includes whether or not you have cookies and things on your website. If it's not there already, there should be a privacy policy available to you as an insider. If there's not, that's just because I haven't recorded a video for it, but I can make it available um, for you. So that way you'll have access to that. And then as far as CPAs, I have, and this is, you want one that's for specifically for state filings. The two people that I normally work with are actually out of state. Um, and I can give you, and I'll give you their information too. I work with Falasha Day, the accountability accountant, and I work with Emerald Sparks. But locally, there is someone, I've never worked with them, but I have clients that work with them and they love them. So I would give you that information too. I just, and actually I just met them for the first time like two weeks ago. So I will email you each of those people's names. Cool beans. Cool beans. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into Murray's Law, which is, you know, our weekly Q&A session where we answer your questions live. If you're here in the Genius Lounge, keep in mind that the, the answers that we give you is not legal advice. It is information for your education experience only. If you need... Um, to talk to an attorney for something about your specific situation, make sure you schedule a consultation. And guess what? If you are a Genius Insider, your consultation is what? Free. And if you are a member of the Genius Lounge, you do receive a discounted consultation. It's not free, but it is discounted. So there's no, there's, it's, it's a, there's no reason for you not to schedule a consultation. Tonight, I really want to talk about, especially where we are today, because what I've seen a lot of since the pandemic has started is a lot of people saying, you know what, I've been sitting on this idea for way too long. I've been sitting on this. What I, what I really need to do is go ahead and launch this business. And a lot of people have been launching businesses during this pandemic. And I am here for it. Let me tell you, I'm here for it. One of the things that I noticed is that a lot of people are were, are, are focused on building their brand. And I have a lot of people that are reaching out to me so they can do it the right way because the message is finally kicking in that, hey, I need trademark protection. Even though people understand that they need the protection, what I'm finding is a lot of people don't understand what exactly that, what does that really mean? What does it really protect? And some people don't have the budget to hire an attorney. So the other thing I get is do I need an attorney to file this application for me, especially in some of the Facebook groups? You know, do I need an attorney to file this application for me? And that's what we're going to tackle today. So trademarks, trademarks for those who are like, I hear this buzzword all the time. Like, what is it? So trademarks protect brand identifiers. So when you're talking about building a business and you're saying, oh, hold up, what should I call this business? What, how do I want people to 
to connect with me. You know, that trade name that's protected by a trademark. And then the number one thing that we all want to do, myself included, because if you've heard my story, you know that when I niche down, like the second thing on my list was getting a logo. Why? I don't know, but it was. So when you get that logo, that brand identifier, again, something protected by trademarks. And trademarks also protect sounds, smells, colors, right? Shapes, all those things that help you really create a brand that's unique to you. And the reason you want to protect your brand, you know, those brand identifiers is because it allows you to create your mark, you know, in the very crowded marketplace. Because most industries are saturated. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I'm not going to say, oh, what you're doing, no one's ever done before. Maybe they haven't done it like you, which is why you want to make sure that when people are looking for you, they find you, right? And that's what trademarks do because they give the owners the right to exclude other people from using that same or similar mark, which is great. Let's say you are, let's say you're an attorney. I wonder where I got that from. No, I'm just kidding. Let's say you're an attorney, right? You are an attorney who, and you want to make sure that uh, you're out here creating your own space. So you come up with the name, which, and I'm just going to tell my story. When I came up with the name for my law firm, when I first started my practice, I did what every attorney does, which is name, give it after their surname, right? So Murray Law Group. When I decided to niche down to help business owners protect their brand and work with, um, in that aspect, I said, I want something that's a little more clever. I want something that's a little more connected to what I'm doing. So I chose off the mark because we keep people off your mark. And so it's important, it was important for me to make sure that no one else, no other attorney that was practicing that type of law or this type of law was able to use that name because if they were, there can be confusion. People will be looking for me off the mark and they will find someone else and we don't want that. So that's why I want, that's the importance of the trademark and that's why I trademarked off the mark and not Murray Law Group, even though Murray Law Group is my business name, the name that I registered with my state. So that's what trademarks do. That's what they protect. And that's why you want to get one. When you get a trademark, it's not just about a certificate, right? It's a lot of things that you can do with that trademark beyond the registration. So yes, it keeps makes you have a unique place in the mark. You get to you get to create your space in the marketplace so you can create your tribe. Everyone's always talking about creating an email list and building a tribe, right? But your tribe, what are they connected to? Right, they're connected to you, your personality, the way that you do things, your, your mission, your values, and what represents that, your brand identifier, whether it be your name or your logo. So that's what you're protecting. So when your tribe is looking for you, when you spend, when, when you spend your time and money creating copy to reel those people in, you want to make sure that they stay with you and not someone else. So that's what the trademark does. But you can also, once you build that tribe, right, other people are going to want to work with you. You can actually license your name out and use it as an additional stream of revenue. So think NFL. NFL does not make t-shirts. They are not in that business, but they get paid. Every time you see a jersey, someone, some manufacturer has paid them $100,000 for a licensing fee, and that's annually. And so you have to start thinking in that kind of aspect, like what do you want your brand to be connected with? And it gives you an opportunity to move into to markets that without actually doing the work, if that makes sense. Like the like I said, NFL doesn't print t-shirts, but they're in that market and they're making money off of it. So that's some things that you get to do. So for instance, I know we have someone here that's in the, the fashion and beauty industry. Maybe they wanna connect with or team up with um, a beauty brand, right? But you don't wanna, do that yourself like you don't want to get into cosmetics but you want to team up with it and that would be a great way for you to do it is to by licensing your intellectual property okay now for the big question that everyone has right the big question that everyone has is do i need an attorney to file this no i'm not going to say oh yes you need an attorney no you can absolutely file your application yourself there is no law against filing an application yourself. Now, you have to be an attorney to file an application for someone other than yourself. And let me say this too. If you reside outside of the country, you have to have 
a licensed attorney to file your application for you. And that's because of, you know, over the years, they've had a lot of, I'm not going to say fraudulent, like the database was just flooded with people from other countries filing the application applications themselves and just doing it wrong apparently because they had to put a, a rule in that says you have to have a license u.s license attorney and that's not so you used to be a licensed attorney and you know it could have been in whatever country but now you have to be a u.s licensed licensed attorney in order to file an application if you are out of the country so that's the answer like you don't have to but the next question is like should i if you can yes for a couple of reasons. One, you are busy running your business and building your brand. Like, do you really wanna add this to your plate? And I'm talking as someone with experience. And I, and I don't mean like experience with filing trademarks. I mean, experience as a business owner doing all the freaking things. And if you put one more thing on my plate, I'm gonna freaking scream. Like, I don't have the time to be doing something else that's not in my realm of genius. That's where I'm coming from. And not only that, the application, I mean, you look at the application, you're like, oh, owner's name, address, this, that. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's so simple. Yes, I can do this. You have to know that when you hire an attorney, you're not just hiring them to complete an application. You're hiring them for the strategy behind completing the application. So we've done a trademark clearance search. We know what's out there, what's available, what possible conflicts are there and how to maneuver the application to avoid that and to also take what we've learned in the consultation about how you're currently using the mark or how you plan on using the mark and where you see your business down the road and making sure that things line up so that you're so that you're protected when you as you grow. However, I do know that in business, especially when you're starting out, you got two things. And this is just all in business, right? You you got two things. You have time and you have money. When you're first starting out, you got a lot more time than you do money in most cases. And if that's the case, then you have this, this, this crossroads. It's like, do I wait? Do I wait and save money and hire an attorney? Or do I risk it all, throw caution to the wind and file this application myself? And the reason I say risk it all and throw caution to the wind is because that application is deceiving. Like it looks easy. But that is deceiving. It's only easy if you know what they really mean when they ask the question. The biggest mistakes that I see people making when they file their own application is, one, they don't know who the owner is. Two, they identify the wrong good or service as in their application. And what's another? Oh, they use the wrong specimen. They, they use the wrong specimen. So, and either, all those things could end, result in your application being, getting a, a non-final, like the first non-final refusal, and which is an office action, right? Which you have six months to respond to, but if you don't know how to respond, then, then you're, you're, you're out of luck. And I've seen a lot of people who have very simple office actions but they end up losing their registration because they don't respond at all. And they don't reach out to anyone to help them respond. And so, yes, you can file your application yourself and you have to wait, okay, do I wait or do I go ahead and protect my brand? One of the things that I would say is if you're going to take the time, so this is, if you must, I just say, do it the right way. I know that people will go down Google rabbit holes and YouTube rabbit holes and then not really have the guidance that they need in order to make sure that their questions are answered the right way. And sometimes they don't know their questions they have until, until they get into it. So what I would suggest is if you're going to do it, let someone help you. That's what, So a few years ago, we did do the, the launch legally blueprint i think that was the name of it i don't know but ultimately i'll walk you through how to do buy your own trademarks or so trademarks and copyrights i got a lot of requests a lot of feedback the feedback was great for people saying oh yes um uh can i take this course or i need to take it later because it was um 
a little under $2,000, uh, but the people that were in the class, they did a phenomenal job. They learned a lot of information. So if you're gonna do it, you know, let someone help you with it, right? And if you're gonna do it, at least at the minimum, get a consultation. Talk to an attorney so you have a better understanding of the trademark process. So when you file this trademark application yourself, there's some things that you need to know. What you need to know is once you file, first thing you need to know is you don't get your money back. If you file the application and you're denied, you don't get your money back. Number one. No, oh, I just, okay, I'm gonna come back to that. I just thought about some, another mistake that people make. Number two. Once you file your application, it's going to sit in the database for three months. It's just going to, and, and right now it's going closer to four months than three months because I don't know why. I don't know if it's because of um, their short staff or the pandemic or, or what, but right now it's going, it really is going closer to four months that the applications are sitting in the database. After the database, the, the examining attorney is going to review it. We talked about that. You're going to get this thing. You might get an office action. If you get an office action, you have six months to respond to that office action. If you do not respond, then they're going to abandon your application. The thing about that is if your application is abandoned, then you have an additional two months to revive it, but it's going to cost you more money to do that. So go ahead and get it done beforehand. If you file your application yourself and you get an office action, you don't have to freak out. If you need help, you should always hire an attorney to help you with that office action. A lot of times, a lot of times what you're going to realize is that you might as well have just paid that attorney in the first place because I don't know, their fee, like my fee always includes responding to the office action. So if you pay, if you need me to respond to the office action, it's going to be about as much as my fee because now you're getting charged hourly for me to respond. So it ends up costing you more money. Um, after that, your application will be, if you, if you do respond and you are successful, so some of these office actions, they're not all doom and gloom. They're not all legal responses, right? Sometimes they want you to disclaim a word and, you know, sometimes they want to make sure your address is right. Sometimes they want to make sure you verify your business entity. Sometimes they want to know something like, is there a translation? Things of that nature. After that your application, if you if you get that right and they accept it, the next thing that's going to happen is your application will be published to the public for 30 days. So a lot of times people say, well, I looked in the database and I didn't see anything. You don't just check the U.S. database when you're looking for um, conflicting marks because in the United States, it's first to use, not first to file. So this is all for my DIY people. These are things you need to consider when you're doing your application yourself. You don't just check the US, United States Patent and Trademark Office. You check common law uses too, because in the United States is first to use, not first to file. Someone who doesn't have a registered trademark can object to the filing of your trademark if they find out that you have an application. And how that, what that typically looks like is you filed your application, right? And then this person decides to file an application. They, they've had the mark before you, they decided to file an application, but now their application is blocked. They received an office action because of your application, right? So even though it's first to use, not first to file in the United States Patent and Trademark Office, that application that was in first, that's what they're gonna look at. So now they're, even though yours was first, they're saying that, oh, this one is conflicting and blocking yours. And you have to wait to see what happens with that one before you can move forward. And so that's when the person will file an, uh, an objection to your registration because now you're blocking up their application and they had it first. So you want to look and for common law uses just to make sure nothing like that happens because if it does, if it does, it's expensive. Like it can, it can, it's, it's, it's akin to civil litigation. And I don't know if you've ever been a part of a lawsuit, but it's expensive. So you have complaints, you have answers, you have discovery, it's just like being a part of a lawsuit. And it can be easily high, mid to high five figures for a lawsuit. Like I had a colleague do one and I mean, like easily $50,000 and they didn't even go to court. This was just 
back and forth discovery, uh, trying to get the thing resolved. So you want to keep in mind and make sure you do a really good trademark clearance search. After that, if you have no objections, if depending on what application you file, you're going to go through a final review and then you get your certificate of registration, right? And so that brings me to a, another point where people mess up. And this is a big one. So when you're filing your application, you, you file either in use or intent to use. Most people, they don't know your assigned, assigned filing basis. They don't know what that means. So they just kind of pick one. And if you pick wrong, then your application can be void. If you're not using your mark in commerce and you say that you are, then your application can be void because you're not using it. You're, you basically lied in your application. So that's the answer. And I know that um, there was a lot of information, but for my DIY people, if that's something that you wanna do, like I said, you wanna make sure that you're working with someone that can help you or you're getting the information from someone that you trust, which is why we brought back our trademark course. It's not live this time. It is pre-recorded, but for anyone that's interested in filing the trademark themselves, they definitely need to take advantage of the Ultimate Launch Legally bundle. It has the trademark course in there. So if you wanna make sure you get the right class, it's in the course. You wanna make sure you know what a specimen, specimen is, specimen is in the course. The right application is in the course. The right owner is in the course. You wanna know how to do a trademark clearance search? Literally it's in the course. Like me showing you my screen as I walk through it. Application, same thing. Because at the end of the day, it's about getting your brand protected. When people contact me for legal services, and sometimes they might go to another attorney, I don't even get mad. You know why? Because they're getting their brand protected. And that's what's important. That's what's important. Because if you wait, you already know you run the risk of someone filing something that's either the same or similar to what you wanted to use, and now you're out of luck. So at the end of the day, I'm an advocate for making sure you protect your brand. So I'm gonna open it up. Let's see, I see a couple of things in the chat. And if anybody wants to unmute themselves, definitely can, because this is the part of the lesson that we kind of just chop it up and ask any more questions if, that you might have. Let me check this too while y'all are doing that. Oh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, I got you, Mary. All right, so any questions about DIY trademarks, filing it yourselves? Anybody ever thought about filing a trademark themselves? I am considering it, maybe. I saw the course and I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> I may just take it just because I wanna learn. I'm, I'm an avid learner, but I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, how common is it for a business to have multiple trademarks? So like multiple brands, is that something that is common? It's very common. So I'm gonna put it this way. Uh, when Kobe Bryant passed away, there was a question that you saw Mamba everywhere, right? So I did a podcast about him and his trademark, which made me have to go and do some research on his trademarks. And just for his, let me think, for his one business where he has Mamba's, like Mamba Academy, he had one, he might've had like four trademarks. So he had the logo, he had the logo and name, he had the name, and then he had like the logo and name in different positions. So it's very common, if you have a mark that you're using, it's very, and you want the ultimate protection, you want to protect it in every way that you use it. And there's another, someone called me because they did file their application themselves and they received an office action. And when I did the trade, when I went and just kind of searched the, the conflict, it was one business, they had an office action for four, say so it, it, it conflicted with four prior registrations. But when I looked, one company owned all four of the registrations. So where it might've been easier, we would have had an easier argument saying, oh, if it was just one registration, we can say, oh, this is different because of 
X, Y, and Z, right? When you hem your application up like that, when you protect it in all the angles, then it's hard to get around. So that's why you see people with multiple trademarks, even if it's for one business. And then when you have multiple brands, like for instance, oh my goodness, I have something when stuff when I get some more help, because apparently I can't keep help, but I have probably five applications for myself to file this year. Like five trademark applications to file myself just to make sure my brand is protected. So it's very common, which is another reason why people would be interested in this course because they need to have a lot of trademarks they want to file. So they're like, oh, let me just learn how to do it myself. Now I will tell you, you made a, a, a statement I had people in the other course say, okay, this is great. I'm glad that I know this, but um, can I just give you money? <laughs> can I just give you money? Because it, it's, it, there is work, there, there is a lot of work behind it, but it can be done. It can be done. It's a lot of work, but it can be done, which is why as an insider, you get discounted trademarks. You get discounted trademarks, just that way you don't have to worry about trying to file it yourself and you don't have to worry about um, paying a whole lot of money it's kind of like a it's like the best of both worlds but we do have we have all the options here so if it's something that you want to do definitely I will say we're just so you guys got it early because you're part of the Genius Lounge Genius Lounge members got access to it early and I can tell you that it's at an introductory fee right now the fee does go up um, in like a week or so so if, you, if you're interested, go ahead and do it and definitely take the use the coupon code because you got the coupon code and that makes it like less than $550, which is awesome. Like that's a great skill set. Hope I answered your question. You did, thank you. You're welcome. Is that cool, Max, that I see? It is, it is. Yeah, that's Max. <laughs> what is upper? What is upper? How are you doing? <laughs> She's not talking. He just saying, hey, hey, hey. You know, and if we were on Clubhouse, we'd, we'd be able to hear you. Don't hide behind Zoom. Don't hide behind the chat. And then we have Mary, Mary. Oh gosh, I just put the Run DMC song in my head. I bet you got that all the time coming up, didn't you? Well, depending on how old you are. Let's see. Well, great. That I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I answered the questions that people, you know, if you want to go the DIY route, I want you to know what you're getting into, know what those common mistakes are and let you know that there is a resource, you know, there is something here for you. And the great thing about that too, about the ultimate launch legally bundle is you'll be a part of the Genius Lounge. And so if you come across questions, you know, general questions, you can ask them here in Murray's Law, specific questions, you can schedule a discounted consultation to get those questions answered. So again, it's really a win-win situation for people who wanna protect their brand on a budget. You're welcome, Mary. Thank you so much. You, and I'm going to send you an email. I'll send you an email tomorrow with the name that I have. I have to get the other guy's contact information, but I will get that for you. And then I'll make sure you have a link to the privacy policy as well. Cool beans. Well, all right, beautiful people. That's all I have. I'm going to hit the...